It's Paco Bell's canon, canon actually. Yeah, Paco, what, Bell's what canon, Paco, Paco, Bell's? Paco Bell's canon in D, in the key in of D. D. And, and it's, it's a wedding song or something. No, it's the ultimate music of the harmonics of the universe. All the strings sing to that song. He only did one song and in that, his life. And we picked that. We picked that as our theme song. The universal song on of the universe. our open and close. The universal Amazing. song of the universe. Wow. Well, you know, we have a theme song we play uh, with our Paco open Bell's and close. And in all D. of these shows, every single show, yeah. and it's Paco Bell's canon. Canon in D. In D, uh, and it's got all the strings and all the harmonics. Uh, Dave all, knows because he knows everything. Well, I know enough about string theory to know that if you go down string to all that string chaos, theory, <laughs> that all the strings are vibrating to the canon okay. and D. That's not exactly the physics kind of string theory, which we talk about at this table. Uh, yeah, there's probably <laughs> some string theory about some of those bathing suits down on Waikiki. Oh, a third possibility. Mm -hmm. uh, this is Dave Rolfo over there. He's the executive director of the Hawaii Automobile Dealers Association. And he's also a, um, a, a PR communications person in his own right. Thank you. So he knows. And he's been doing that for about two, 200 years now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And he knows all these wonderful places in Honolulu that he takes people to. It's a joy. To. Yeah, pure so joy. He knows. He's, he knows. He, he could go down the street and show you things that you, you might have passed a thousand times, but you didn't notice. Now he'll show you. We have some of the most beautiful public art with so many secrets found in it. It's almost like that uh, movie that they had, uh, you know, on the National Secrets with all the secrets inside the, the Washington Monument. Uh, our, we have secrets inside our, our uh, public our art. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I mean, there's secrets everywhere if you look. You know, I mean, there's something to learn every step, isn't it? I think so, yes. I think we've all learned a lot from watching what you've done in the way of programming. And I, you have a lot archived. I'm very proud to be part of your uh, broadcasting. Yeah, you're there and you will be there for sure. So we talk about energy today, Dave. And the reason is that there's a, an auto show coming up. <clears throat> very excited about it because this show somehow is different than all the shows in the past. Why is this night different from all other nights? This is the, this is the show that where we're really going to roll some, some uh, green cars out. Can you talk about it? Well, this auto show happening March 13th through the 15th is the big brother of all shows that have ever come before it. It started in 1978 when Walter Dodds talked 13 dealers into coming down to the Blaisdell and they put their cars on the carpet and it was a wonderful exhibit. And then uh, come around uh, the year 2000, automobile dealers started working with the manufacturers and they made it into a manufacturer show. Uh, the title sponsor is First Hawaiian Bank uh, because uh, Walter helped start that show. So yeah, and they now, also make car loans. Uh, and they do <laughs> the largest number of car loans, I understand, in the state uh, for any of the financial institutions. But it's down at the convention center, 200,000 square feet. That's four that's, football fields. That's you the know, whole main deck there, correct, the ground level. Huh? Four acres, four football fields. It's fields of dreams. But to answer your question, why is this one the big brother <laughs> fields of, of all? Fields of dreams. Yeah. I've I got to get over these statements. It takes a little while to react. <laughs> The things you throw at me, Dave. It's lovely. I mean, Field of dreams. Okay. Well, this one has a big triple bottom line thing going on with it because it, I, I, triple bottom line kind of refers to something that's, uh, you know, that's social, that's environmental, and that's financial. And so you go down there and look at 350 cars and you weigh them against, what's that car going to do for me? How will I look? And wh how much fun is it going to be? It's going to be social. I'm going to have a great time sure. with it. You weigh it against how environmental it is, what kind of miles it gets, whether it's going to be an electric car or now a hydrogen car. We even have that. We'll talk about it in a moment. And you say, well, how much is it? Now, what are the payments? Oh, look at these low lease payments. My goodness, oh, the interest payments are so low. So you have this triple bottom line way of looking at all 350 cars all at once in these fields of dreams and it interplayed with all the Lamborghinis and Ferraris and the dream cars of all time and the old dreamy cars the 31 Packards and the, all there. the new muscle cars and the EVs and now a hydrogen car. So it is just a, a glorious display this year, the biggest, best we've ever had. And I, I've had so much interest in it, I think largely because of the hydrogen car coming. It's such a dramatic change. It's so different. And we predicted it down to the day. And then, we, of course, we have Pi Day that we're going to be celebrating. But I'll get to that. Ask me away. Ask Pi away. Pi, well, let's talk about hydrogen first. So who's making it, and who's delivering it, and what is it like? Well, hydrogen, you mean? It's, uh, well, well, it was made car, back in, no, hydrogen was made that. back at the Big Bang, okay? We're, we're going to hear about hydrogen now. You get to go back to the Big Bang 13.5 okay. billion years ago, okay. when in a trillionth and a trillionth and a trillionth of a second, at trillionth of trillionth of trillionth <coughs> degrees, 
uh, all the matter and energy in the universe was created. And all the electrons had matching protons. You know, that all happened all at that millions, trillions, trillions, of a trillions, trillions, trillions of a trillionth of a second in massive amounts of heat. I'm glad I wasn't and, around. And then 375... PTSD right there. Then 375,000 <laughs> years later, it sort of condensed down into hydrogen and helium. And that subsequently, through gravity, created stars. The, and we are the stardust of which it all is made. And now you come these many some odd years later, after the Big Bang, and you have a small trade association that has been asked to see if it could comply with the Hawaii Clean Energy Initiative. And we said, you want 40% of all the cars to be on the roadways to be hydrogen or electric by the year 2030? I mean, we have a million cars. This is cars one of your exhibits, isn't it? This is one of our exhibits. And yeah. we have, we have this is, this all is, the... It's like last year. It's really spectacular. It, it really this is. It's an exhibit. A, a, a it. Wonder, yeah. it uses public yeah. art to explain public policy. And so we use the great Tadashi Sato mosaic in the middle of the capital. It has 654,000... One red one. And one red one, that's the hydrogen car. Now, don't coming. ask me how I know that, except you told me. Well, that's the hydrogen <laughs> car that's coming this year. <laughs> okay. okay, so the other 654,000 are blue and green. Okay. And so the state wants 40% of all those tiles, 40% of all the cars on Oahu, to be hydrogen or electric or some renewable fuel by 2030. Well, that's around the corner now. It's 16 years away. It's a little over two model years away. So how do you do it? You would have to bring in the hydrogen car. So eight years ago... We set a chart together, and we showed how many cars would be sold, and we said in March of 2015, now this is the difference between going through high school and college for me, okay? So four years of high school and four years of college. This would be like my freshman year of high school predicting when I graduated from college what car would be in an auto show eight years later, That's and it's going to be here on March 12th. Okay. And I, I, it, we could almost have predicted it to the hour. How could we have done that? But, uh, I mean, it's clairvoyance. Well, we had to work with all the manufacturers. We had to work through that whole thought about what is necessary to fulfill the, the goal. Auto dealers are very goal-oriented, and, and I think as business people, we're always that way. Should be. And so I give great credit to the good folks at Servco Toyota who reached out uh, you know, to Toyota Motor Company in Japan, which was bringing on board this hydrogen car, the Mirai. It means oh, I see movies of that. Yeah. Unbelievable. It's already in production. It is. If you go Google it, uh, and you'll you'll see some of the most wonderful videos you've ever seen. They have charcoal cities and the calving charcoal coming down, and a snow falls on the city, and a blue line runs through it, and it becomes the Mirai, and it's what an amazing, amazing video. Uh, but the Mirai means the future in Japanese. But we have never seen a CEO like Akira Toyota, who was on the front cover of uh, Bloomberg magazine, tipping over with one leg in the air like that in his suit. And the headline was Tipping Point. And he says, this company, the largest uh, automobile company in the world, is really kind of going all in for hydrogen. And so where will that happen? Would it happen in Missouri or in Tennessee or Florida? No. It's going to happen in only three places in the United States. California has had the lead on that for a long time. <laughs> But Boston area, with a corridor there, is going to have some of these hydrogen highway type things developed. And little in the middle of the Pacific, Hawaii, has been chosen by the U.S. Department of Energy for the focus on this hydrogen car. <coughs> well, you, you can't make it work unless there's infrastructure in this particular case. The EV, you could plug into the 120 outlet in your house, and you could get a 220, and now they have the fast chargers, and there's lots of things happening on electric vehicles. The hydrogen fuel cell electric vehicle actually fuels its electric a battery from the hydrogen so fuel So it's really cell. an electric car. Right. Back to the Big Bang. So the, all that hydrogen was created. They crush it down into, uh, or I guess compress it is a better word, to yeah. 10,000 PSI mm -hmm. in a carbon fiber tank. Mm -hmm. And when it's released to the proton exchange membrane, that proton is exchanged right through it and is on the other side, but the electron is now separated. Remember at the Big Bang, all the electrons and protons in the universe matched Get up? energy that way. Yeah, and so that electron creates electricity in the electromagnetic force by firing through the copper wire up into the battery, stored there till the accelerator is pressed, and then, then it's put into the electric motor, and then back over there with its proton and hooks up with water, and, and that's how, what comes out the back end. And so what you have then is you have uh, the ad for the Mirai which says, make your mark and leave no mark.
<laughs> I mean, it's just, it just hangs in the air, that statement. It's a beautiful, beautiful statement. It's a beautiful car. It, it looks like uh, those the stealth jet fighters. I was a naval aviator, you know, and I have great appreciation. I can never forget. You know. Great appreciation for uh, aircraft design. But this car has some of the most beautiful lines you'll see. So in, in any case, it's the first of the hydrogen cars to go into production that will actually be brought to the consumer. And it will be happening in Hawaii. And now it's kind of started with the good folks with Servco. But it'll be some time before the fueling stations and all this happen and you know it can kind of come about. You can't go do this this afternoon. No, but uh, I have some questions about it. OK. Um, you know, first of all, I'd like to tell you that here at ThinkTech, we have always felt that hydrogen was going to jump over pure electric because, uh, of, because of the range anxiety issue, among other things. And uh, it sounds like Toyota feels the same way. Well, you might have seen our chart that we drew a number of years ago that showed that that is the case, that that, that happens in 2023 where uh, the hydrogen car passes the electric car on the turn and then continues to go upwards in the electric car. Uh, probably because of battery uh, costs, unless it can get the battery costs down enough, uh, it, it would start in a fade. But if they can solve the battery conundrum, uh, then it'll uh, keep well, pace with the uh, hydrogen car. Then you get both ends of it, though. Because the electric car is so much more efficient. I yeah, mean, it, it doesn't really... take but a, a minute to fuel it. Well, the hydrogen car. It doesn't take Sorry, hydrogen, a yeah. few minutes, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's about as fast as uh, it does your gasoline car. Yeah, right. yeah. So that's really different. And, and of course, the range anxiety thing. 300 if you miles had both, with hydrogen. If you had an advanced fuel cell mechanism, right, plus uh, an advanced battery, both of them, you'd have a thousand mile car. I don't know that or yet. 500. <laughs> Jay. I'm just predicting here. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, that's, uh, that's pretty speculatory, speculating. But I. I uh, um, would say that we had predicted it to a fairly well. And, and, and I, I think I, the auto dealers, knowing that they had to fulfill the Clean Energy Initiative because they gave their word they'd make every effort and ardently try to they do that. They went beyond electric. They went beyond electric. They went in, and Grant at Servco, uh, we really appreciate them doing that. Uh, Hyundai has one of these vehicles also, and they uh, sell it in California now. Uh, they uh, lease it, I guess, is a better term, four ninety nine a month. And I think they get the hydrogen at uh, no charge, I think, for a yeah, certain amount of years. I've heard of that. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so anyway, it's, uh, that's quite an exciting <laughs> aspect of the auto show. Uh, and the reason it's so exciting but is... I can't buy one. Uh, I can go down there with a big checkbook as I want. I can't buy one. Oh, I, I would talk to the Servco folks about that. You, make, you could put an order in now for I, I, delivery on delivery. We don't know any of those details yet. What we know is the car is being flown here. Yeah. Uh, I think there's a copy of it at the mainland. Yeah. It's just been introduced. And, and so we know all these things are being developed. Where, where the fuel station will be and fuel stations, those are oh, all. Oh, really? That's known? Well, they're going to probably put one in. We, these aren't established yet, and, and you have to do a couple probablys. But we did a lot of probablys when we established the chart. Uh, but the probabilities landed because there were high probabilities. Uh, so I, I would, wouldn't imagine that you could actually bring the vehicle in without having uh, some type of fueling facility. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I expect, and we should hear from the Servco folks themselves to make such announcements. I, <clears throat> if I, you have yeah. uh, greater range with this car, then theoretically you can have one of those electrolyzer units in your home driven off uh, photovoltaic, and you can get enough fuel to go do your daily rounds without ever having to worry about a charging station. That's the theory, and of course, I think uh, that's happened with a couple people already. Now, they, they happen to have the assets to be able to create those like big Hank pieces. Rogers, for example. He has a, a hydrogen fueling facility. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, qu'est-ce que c'est la prise? La prise. Come on, come bien, uh, come bien. Yeah, come bien, please. Uh, uh, fifty-seven, uh, fifty-seven thousand dollars is what I've heard, and I don't know what it, that, they, that might be after rebates, uh, but uh, it is a reverse Moore's law, and I think that's a beautiful thing. <laughs> uh, what has happened is they said that you heard it here. <laughs> well, Moore's law was that the, the amount of uh, uh, information on chips doubles every twenty-four months in the world, and now they say it's down to eighteen months. Well. With the hydrogen car, they said when it came out in 2010, and it was $100,000 plus, that it would be half of that by 2015. Well, I think they're right in that vicinity. Pretty much, yeah. Would it not then have again by, you know, by, by 2020, if that, if that is possible, I don't know. Uh, but that's what the direction, I think, was the original ideas for this all. Again, I, I would like to wait for our good folks at Servco, who have every right to be able to announce all the information on this and, 
and, and break all this information. I'd be happy to talk about the show. I, I really just know that uh, they're doing a wonderful thing for Hawaii. They are. Uh, an absolutely wonderful thing. I mean, because uh, they had to reach out and do this for Hawaii. Uh, one of the things that I've ex uh, been really surprised about, that, that there doesn't seem to be a, a profit end in this because it, it just... It's, it's so expensive, I think, to develop the technology at the outset. Now that they're bringing it out at a reasonable cost, you wonder how in the end uh, you know, it, it becomes uh, profitable. I'm sure they're I, wondering, too. But if you, if you play the game, then ultimately you carve out the profit uh, you know, it, It's a, sort of an R&D development type thing, a research development th thing to, to determine uh, how it will all come about. I think what fascinated me most when I when I googled hydrogen and looked back to some of the history, I saw Hawaii's name pop up in the middle of the history of hydrogen, and I saw the name Spark Matsunaga pop up in the middle, and the fund that is established in Congress where all the hydrogen money comes through is the Spark Matsunaga Hydrogen Fund established in 1990, and that act is where all the federal monies go through the name of a Hawaii senator. And then subsequently, some of that money comes to Hawaii through the U.S. Department of Energy uh, to create things like um, a rubbish truck that is run on hydrogen fuel cell electric vehicles. Buses and all there that. might be buses. In, in the military. We already have military buses, and that is federal monies that have come here and been used. So uh, we used to see Senator Inouye send quite a bit of things to Hawaii. Now we actually have a fund that's from the hydrogen fund. The hydrogen it's fund a state, state money. That is federal money. But put into the state, is that That what would be put into the state for research, uh, for research of fueling stations, for vehicles, for GSA vehicles. How much, you know? Possibly. I, I don't know where it could all go and how much it is and what it'll do. And, and that, if you have a, a gateway that you can send everything through, at least it's established now. Nobody has to uh, work up the system anymore. It's all so already So do you there. think that Hawaii can participate in the R&D for the, for the hydrogen cars? Well, or is I, it already done? Oh, in heavens, no. I mean... They did bring some hydrogen cars here through the military, and that has been studied since 2010 or 2011. And uh, those were uh, the Equinox, it was called. And I uh, drove the first one off of the Matson ship when it came in, and I got to drive it to JN Chevrolet. So I, it, it's it, seamless. These are the perks of being the executive director of the Hawaii nah, Automobile Dealers it, Association. I don't call it a perk. They didn't have anybody else who did, could do it. And so they <laughs> called me at the last minute and said, could you leave your home in Mililani and go down the ship and take it over to JN because we don't have anybody else to do it, if that's a perk. Okay. <laughs> so I, on a Sunday... There you I, go, being a nice guy. Uh, well, I don't want Monday, I guess. But, uh, yeah, no, it was fun to be able to drive that car. Uh, and, and it is quiet, of course, like an electric car. And you are running on hydrogen, and that's the most abundant element in the universe, and that is sort of a, a, a fascinating existential moment to be able to, to do that. You do leave no mark. And I wanted to make sure nobody left any mark on that car because it must have been wildly expensive being one of the early ones. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, now it actually is kind of being rolled out by the uh, Toyota Motor well, Company. Wasn't General Motors involved at one point with hydrogen cars? They sent out here last two or three years. I remember seeing one at uh, HNEI there on Ward Avenue. I don't know what happened after that. You know, it's, it's funny that uh, a lot of companies have considered it, but they haven't gotten into production. Toyota, to its credit, got into production. And, and just so we for, don't remember, I mean, so we don't forget, Toyota was the guy who came up with the hybrid, which is really, you know, in many ways, the first electric car that was mass produced. Correct. And they, they have that model they can follow, and they, they understand how to introduce a vehicle. They can put all those technologies together, all the hybrid technologies, including the newest ones that are coming out <coughs> now, plus hydrogen. What a fantastic combination of technology. They're probably going to be the leader going forward, don't you think? I, I really don't you can, know. You can't say that because you have to be equal to all the car manufacturers. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> I admire what they're doing. <clears throat> what about electrics, pure electrics? Are they going to be at the show? Before you answer that question, let me take a short break. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> That's for both of our mutual benefits. Uh, Dave Rolfe, the Hawaii Automobile Dealers Association, uh, and he is here to talk about the car show, which is March 13th. March 13th. That's only that's right around the corner. It's coming up. It's happening. Hi Dave. It's now. March 13th, well, next March week, 14th, 15th. Okay, and um, we're, we're talking about EVs and hydrogen cars at the automobile show next week. We'll be right back with more. Hi, aloha. My name is Chris Leatham, and I have host a show called The Economy and You. Uh, the show plays every Wednesday at noon, and 
on my show, I bring on guests who are interested or working in the technology space. And uh, so I'd like you to come and watch the show and learn with me about all the sort of exciting things that we're doing in Hawaii to build and grow our economy ecosystem. So I'd like to say aloha, and I look forward to seeing you on the show. Thank you. Aloha. I'm Hunter Hevelin, host of Sustainable Hawaii here at ThinkTech Hawaii. You can tune in every week on Thursday at 2 p.m. to see interviews with sustainability professionals from around the state and even further abroad, learning about activities with water management, food security, waste management, and a whole host of other uh, fascinating opportunities to get engaged with making a greener island. So if you're interested in making the transition from consuming individuals to communities of producers, check us out every Thursday. Okay, we didn't go anywhere. We're, we're still here. We're back. Uh, that's Dave Rolf. He's the executive director of the Hawaii Automobile Dealers Association, a very important organization in a state that loves cars, all kinds of cars, and maybe those tastes are changing. So we're talking about the auto show, which starts on, on the 13th of March, next Friday, a week from today, and goes through the weekend, I guess, the 15th. And it's really something you got to see. you got to see. you got to go down there. I went last, last year. I took a camera. I'm going to take a camera again, Dave, okay? And, and take pictures of these beautiful things. They're works of art, all of them. And to see them all in one place like that just blows your mind. And you want to get a car. You want to buy a car. You walk in there, you're an ordinary person. You, want, you come out, you want to buy a car. Well, again, back to that triple bottom line, everybody looks at those 350 cars that are on display there under those wonderful halogen lights and that Motor Trend Highway patented carpet with the big signs oh, overhead yeah, that, that look like pull off here, you know, for age yeah, you three. Really or for drive. It's, uh, it's like you go for a drive <laughs> through 350 cars. And people are judging them on a triple bottom line. They're asking uh, the, the social aspect, the environmental aspect, and the financial aspect. And they're saying, what will this car do for me socially? Do, you know, does it fit where I want to be there? And also, will it hold enough of the family? And will it do things that I, I can need to do with the car? Uh, and how do I feel in it? Uh, that's kind of, sort of the social aspect of all the cars that we buy. Mine has a name. I know a lot of people name their cars. What car is the name? Is it the name of a man or a woman? Uh, it's named Rosebud after the great, uh, you know, <laughs> wonderful movie where uh, you know, <laughs> Citizen Hearst, uh, Hearst uh, said, uh, Rosebud at the uh, end. I would expect nothing less. Uh, <laughs> it was, uh, you know, the favorite sled of uh, that uh, owner of the newspaper. And uh, that uh, vehicle, I just am always happy every moment I'm in it. But it is has it electric. Uh, it's a it's a combustion air vehicle uh, called internal combustion engine ICE. But uh, it gets more mileage, a higher mileage. It's an SUV than my little compact uh, Volkswagen did when I bought it in 1970. Well, people, so you, people have to remember that the technology for the combustion engine is also moving forward, mm -hmm. and and for that matter, the technology for the electric vehicles is moving forward. You can see it all when you go down there. It's not just one thing. It's not just hydrogen. Yeah. Uh, the Latin for it all is per gay, press on and. I tell you, because of the corporate average fuel economy standards, the manufacturers have given great a uh, attention to making those vehicles get more fuel efficiency. You'll see the F-150, the most popular vehicle in America, the Ford F-150, is now aluminum. Is right? It's <laughs> aluminum, right? Aluminum body. Yeah. It's made out of uh, military... It's as big as a condominium. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's military-grade <laughs> aluminum. And uh, so industrial strength aluminum, and it lowers the weight of the vehicle considerably and improves the gas mileage. They have the ability uh, with other cars that start stop. So when they get to the stoplight, the engine uh, turns off and turns on again. Cool. When they want to go. Uh, they have turbochargers now that improve the gas mileage. They lowered the weight of vehicles that improves it. They've improved the the uh, outline of the vehicle. Doesn't this have the effect of trying of, of of keeping the loyal ICE ICE let's call it ICE customers, <laughs> uh, you know, in engine. fossil fuel cars instead of them letting letting them go to the green cars. I mean, it's this is not necessarily. The direction we want to go. Oh, I, I don't think that's the purpose of designing it that way. Or there's no thought behind any of that. Uh, we asked the auto mavens at that group of the Auto Lunch Bunch uh, a couple days ago, what, are, what is the most fun you've had with a car? And when you speak of internal combustion, uh, the guy said, I remember my dad when he was still alive, we put a, a glass of water half filled in a, in a, a glass uh, on top of the air filter and uh, you know we tuned that Camaro right down to we took all the vibrations out of that water that was a great moment for me and dad yeah, it sounds so like the the passion about the internal combustion car is because it's been around since the early 1900s sure. great and, technology and in fact I think the reason we have so many of them Bill Vandenherk is the president of HADA this year his wife Nikki Vandenherk is the uh, uh, I mean the national the, is the dealer of the year his wife is the dealer of the year they uh, co-own the company uh, her great-grandfather was named P.E. Martin, 
and he was the third employee for Henry Ford. And Henry Ford sent him over to France to study the moving assembly line. He brought it back to Highland Park and established in 1914. And all these cars that you see around us are because of the manufacturing line, assembly line, dating back to her great-grandfather. The story of America. The story of America is productivity. And I, I tell that story uh, metaphorically. It wasn't it Yoda who said, uh, metaphors be with us, Luke? You know, or <laughs> I, I don't know. But uh, okay. it's a metaphor <laughs> for the fact that it, what we're trying to do in Hawaii is figure out how to produce hydrogen like they produced rapidly the car. You're trying to produce great amounts of hydrogen at, at a price that makes it very attractive with gasoline. And then you have cracked a big problem. Yeah. Well, the and good news is lots of hydrogen around. We just we had to work on the process to get it out of the air. And that's an expensive piece of electricity to to put toward the hydrogen yeah, in yeah. electrolysis process to be able to pull it out. It takes about 63 kilowatt hours right now to pull a kilogram of hydrogen. I've heard out. that. And uh, so that's going to make at 30 cents uh, a kilowatt hour, 18, 19 dollars for a kilogram. Kilogram is about two gallons of gas, so you have now eight and a half dollar, nine dollar gas. It's not cheap enough. And it, it's got to. What happens though? I think when if you go to Safeway, you find a lot of people buy these wines over here. Some people buy this wine, and some people buy that wine. So there will be people who are willing to drive a vehicle and and you you know add, and use a fuel that that is a premium. For now. Fuel. For now. For now. But that that goes to my last question to you, Dave. And and I asked you briefly in the intermission. Um, you know, how are we going to get people to buy into this new technology and leave their old fossil cars? Uh, is it going to be hard? You said, no, it's going to be easy. How easy is it going to be? How do you do it? Well, I, th I think we all pretty much have wallets and we all have purses. Uh, I mean, uh, I, I mean uh, so it's a function of dollars. In other words, if it all comes where it's an attractively priced kilogram of hydrogen, it's an attractively priced car, and it's available, um, what, uh, what makes, it, it would be seamless, it'd be very similar to a gasoline car. So I think in our lifetime, our children will see this transition, and, and it'll be about the time it took to transition from that Motorola brick, uh, which was 1983, as I recall, and you got a half hour charge, uh, you got a half hour speaking for a 10 hour charge, but now we have this, which we charge overnight, and it has, I think, do video on it and everything else. That was um, 83 to now, what, 33 years? So you, you will see yeah. that kind of transition in the hydrogen car. It wouldn't be expected tomorrow. And we should all live so long to enjoy it. Well, I think they're talking about that now, too, right? <laughs> right. All these things coming together in a confluence. Cars, people, medicine, electronics. Metaphors. This is a great time to live. Uh, it, uh, it is. Yoda. Uh, and thank you. And, and, you know, on Saturday, it's Pi Day which is uh, Albert Einstein's birthday is March 14th. So that, That's if you know what pi is, it's uh, the mathematical 3.1415. 3 1, yes. So that day, March 14th, 15th, will be a day if you do a test drive down at the auto show, you'll get a pizza pie from Papa John's. Oh. Uh, the first 500 people who do that. And I, I don't know what cars are gonna be out there being test driven, but out in front on the Port Coach, uh, you can uh, hop in a car, drive it around the block or uh, in the little course that they've set up and a Papa John's will provide a Papa John's pizza. So at the auto show, you can look at these 350 cars, you can drive some of them, you're gonna to get to see a lot of the exotics, you're gonna to get to see a 31 Packard, which is the Monopoly car, makes my knees buckle, I love it. Uh, you'll get to just see a lot of friends because uh, a lot of friends are down there. Okay, that's uh, Dave Roth, Executive Director of HADA. Here in the state of clean energy, we're talking about electric vehicles and hydrogen cars at the automobile show this week starting on the 13th, a week from today, March 13th, going through the weekend to March 15th. Thank you so much for coming down, Dave. Thank you very much, Jay. Are you sure that pi is 3.1415? It goes on ad infinitum. Okay. <laughs>